Well, welcome back from that particular segment where we're discussing music as a lifestyle. Now we change gears and take a look at what's happening on the Twitter streets and the conversation in regard to the Uganda Matters celebrations that happens annually every 3rd of June. Now today our main focus and emphasis is going to be at is what is happening at the Uganda Anglican Matters Shrine or as some people may call it the Uganda Anglican Museum. Now this particular one was actually first recorded recognized by Joshua Serufusa Zake and that was between a period of 1884 and that was on the 25th of June 1985. Well, when it was constructed as a structure at Namugongo site where the current shrines were later built. Now this particular this particular museum, like I said, it's a museum because it shows in detail exactly what the Uganda matters had to go through because they refused to denounce their faith in God. Now, this particular one is actually a museum because it has different places where you're able to see where Mukajanga used to stay when the matters were bundled up and tied. And of course, not forgetting that it's both the Anglicans and the Catholics. And that is what we're going to be looking at, looking at what the ambience is like at the Anglican shrine and also do not forget that when it comes to celebrating of 3rd June, it's not just the pilgrims, no. It is also a time for people to come and tour and come and see exactly what kind of uh, experience the Uganda matters came through. And actually, looking at uh, statistics from the Uganda Tourism Board, it states that most revenue that we receive in the country is actually through tourism. So most of the tourists actually still will be pouring into the country as they come and see these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things that happened back in 1884. Otherwise, my colleague Sarah Apollo is on standby and she is at the Anglican Museum and she's going to be letting us know of what is happening. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Yes. Hello, Siobhan. How are you? Good morning. Can you hear me? How are you today? Hi, Sarah. Well, today... Yes, well, today I am at the Uganda Matters site, Namugongo. And as you can see, I have been here since uh, 7 a.m. The ambience is quite calm and somber and actually quite relaxing. On my right is the Uganda Matters uh, Museum. Uh, to my left, just uh, down overhead, is the Uganda Matters site, Namugongo. And overhead, I can just see the Uganda Matters Seminary, Namugongo. Well, as you can see, there are a few, about a few hundred uh, pilgrims in the compound at the moment. And uh, you can also see uh, a few are also just walking in at the moment as I look at the entrance right now. And uh, you can also see that security detail is all over the place. You can't make five steps without literally seeing an armed officer. It also just makes me feel like the security is uh, very, you know, very tight and taken very seriously. There are a few businesses that have been set up as well. I can, you know, count just a few, but I can see Bibles, yes. I can see Bibles over here on my left. Uh, there's an espresso machine as well. Uh, but before I get into the businesses, I, I'm here joined by Reverend Bossa. And uh, he's going to be giving us a few insights into the preparations and everything that is taking place right here at uh, the Uganda Matters site. Good morning, Reverend Bossa. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm very fine. So please tell us exactly how much preparation is being done, you know, in preparation for the Mother's Day celebrations this, later this week. Yeah, we thank God that we started uh, on Saturday, Saturday on uh, 28th, with the Children's uh, Day. Then we had the Youth Day on the following day, that was Sunday. Yes. Then uh, these days we have uh, ministries going on. In the morning, you've just uh, found us when we have just had the first session. Yes. Now people are relaxing. Yes. Then we, uh, we have mid-morning mid uh, prayers. Then we have lunch time. Then we have evening prayers. 
and uh, on second we shall be having uh, a conference for women and men so it is going to be a big conference uh, still reflecting on our theme uh, hope beyond affliction yes so then it did day uh, that is the third we shall begin in the morning uh, the gates will be opened in the morning uh, with the praises and then we shall begin the service at nine so we are going to have within the service uh, many activities preaching holy communion preaches and other things which make up a service yes all right thank you reverend my other question is any other challenges in the preparations towards uh, Mother's Day on 3rd June? Yeah, uh, always inevitable. Uh, they are always there. Like uh, raising the, 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 the funds for the budget, it has not been easy. It has been a hassle. Then also preparing this place and more so uh, where we are going to pray from because where we are praying from this time it has not been the user press. So the user press is under construction. So we just shifted from there to another new, new location, which is the playground. So it has not also been easy for us. And also another challenge is for our uh, pilgrims who usually fetch water from here. Today you've not seen them. So they come for water, but this time we have not had water because the place where they use it to fetch that water is also under construction. The well was covered, so it, uh, our pilgrims, they are not very happy with us, but we have nothing to do. We've been telling them to bear with us. Yeah. So have you given them another alternative of where they can you know, get the holy water from? Uh, there is no alternative, but they are finding their means of getting water. Yeah. But also, this is a warning to them. I've heard that there are some people who are trying to get money out of them, promising mm -hmm. that they are going to get water mm -hmm. for them, holy water. Yeah. But this is a warning. There is no holy water. As I've told, the well was covered because of the construction is going on, and there is no water. But uh, we shall put that well back after the construction is done. Next time, we shall have that water. So, Reverend Bossa, I want to ask, this is the first uh, public celebration of the Uganda Matters since the COVID-19 pandemic. The past two years were scientific, so how does it feel to be back and, you know, interacting with the pilgrims right here at the site? Uh, in fact, uh, I was here for those two years, yes. but it was paining. You know, you are used to so many yes. people, but then 2020, 20, we had only 40 people who were allowed. 20, uh, 20, yeah, 2021, last year, yes. we had 200. So, but uh, this is a joy, our joy to yes. see, because this is their place. Yes. So, to see uh, many, many people, it is joy for us. And in fact, we had named our archbishop because ever since he was consecrated, yes. uh, he was uh, leading us into these celebrations yes. scientifically. So we named him a scientific archbishop. <laughs> but it, for this very first time, yes. he's going to lead us mm -hmm. uh, in big numbers. numbers. Yes. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Bossa. Do you have any parting shots, any message to any believers or pilgrims who may be on their way here today? Yeah, I'm telling them uh, as they come, they are supposed to be their security. Much as we have the forces around, but they are supposed to be very careful. Because when children of God come, also those ones of Satan come. Yes. I'm also telling those people who are here, please, they should not leave their property uh, without being attended to. Yes. If you are leaving, leave it with somebody whom you, 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 you know. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Reverend Bosa. Thank you so much for talking for us right here at Sunrise at Sea on CTV. I wish you a great day and a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, well, 
This year's uh, celebrations will be presided over the most reverend, that is Dr. Stephen Samuel Kazimba Mugalu, and he is the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda. And uh, just like Reverend Bosa did say, they have been calling him and teasing him that he's a scientific archbishop. But this year, he will be able to preside over the hundreds and thousands of people that will be attending the Martyrs Day celebrations right here at uh, the Namugongo site. Uh, Anglican Church and uh, as you can see uh, again just to give you more insight the theme this year is hope beyond affliction and uh, that is derived from uh, a verse from Lamentations that is chapter 3 verses 21 to 25 and uh, the Diocese of Greater Ankole will also be you know taking charge and uh, you know taking charge of preparations for the Uganda Matters Day celebration so Come with me, let's take a look and let's have a walk around, probably talk to some business owners and some pilgrims and they let us know and give us more insight into how they feel about attending the Martyrs Day celebrations after two years of attending it scientifically. So come with me. Yes. Um, as you know, the Anglican Church is expected to have at least 20,000 pilgrims from all over Uganda, Africa and the world in general. So I want to speak to some business owners. This gentleman here, this lovely gentleman over here is selling Bibles. As you can see, they are children Bibles and also Bibles translated in Luganda and other languages. Good morning, sir. I hope you don't mind talking to me. My name is Sarah from Sunrise at Sea on CTV. Good morning, sir. What's your name? Good morning. I am Paul Wamimbi. Hello, Paul. How are you? Yes, hello. How are you? So how are you feeling today? Are you feeling hopeful? Does it look like a good day to make some money and also, you know, to pray and come closer to God? Yeah, we are hoping so. However, customers have not yet come. We are just expecting maybe as day days draw closer. We're expecting more to come, but so far, just just like that, selling a few one comes and the other like that. All right. yeah. So what is the turn up like? How many pilgrims have you seen uh, here since they started making their way to to the site for the Matters Day preparations and prayers? Yeah, we people are coming, pilgrims are coming all over. We're seeing them coming from different dioceses. I think this year... They are coming and we're expecting more to come in numbers. Yes. Yeah. All right. yes. So I would like to ask, what is your main objective being here present at the Uganda Matters Anglican uh, site Namugongo? Are you, here, are you here to attend prayers as well? Would you, will you also be attending prayers on 3rd June? Definitely I will be attending prayers. I came here also to like feel how to be here on Matters Day, yes. but also use that opportunity. To make, to make some money Absolutely. and make money by availing the word of God Absolutely. to people who have come. Yes. 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 Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And a happy Martyrs Day to you, sir. <laughs> As you can see, the feeling right here, the energy right here is just so calming. I feel so relaxed. There's no hassle. Security is everywhere, so I don't, you know, I don't feel like I should be concerned about any security issues. I can also see a number of sanitation uh, points. I can see about four overhead and uh, just on my left down here. I don't think the camera can reach there, but just down there, I can count four just in my sight. So they're taking the SOPs very, very seriously. Not a number of people are wearing masks. And uh, I hope, I pray to God that, uh, that the numbers of COVID-19 infections will not increase. But I do see a lot of sanitation points. There is also a number of business owners here sell selling sanitizer. So I think we are safe. We're in good hands. So I'm going to try and find more pilgrims that I can talk to and uh, get more insight and see how they feel about attending the Uganda Matter celebrations. There's a lovely gentleman over here wearing a suit. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine. What is your name, sir? I'm Rogers. I'm Bradina. Rogers, where are you from? I'm from Palisa. You're from Palisa. Did yes. you walk from Palisa? Yes. Raja Tesot. Uh, little, little. Little, little. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so how do you feel being here at uh, the Uganda Matters site now going at the Anglican Church? I feel very comfortable because I will come to remember the way these people suffered. Yes. Because of their face. Yes. And it is the face that made me to move also up to here. Yes. Yes. And I expect more. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. Yes. Yes. Did you walk or did you take a bus from Palisa? No. Me, I moved. I came this way on Friday up to Photo Photo. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, they dropped me to Mbarara. Yes. This is where I moved from up to here. Yes. You walked from Umbara. Yes. Oh, how are your feet feeling? Are they swollen? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm very strong enough because yes. I know Jesus is here. Yes. He has been healing me in each and everything, yes. each and every situation. Mm -hmm. I'm very comfortable. And I know I'll be okay. Yes. 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 So you haven't uh, suffered any physical no, situation? No, 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 no. Yes. With God. Everything is possible. Everything, amen, amen. Yes, everything is possible. Right. Yes. Do you have a message for other pilgrims and other believers and you know people who have faith in, in God? Why not? Mm -hmm. I have. People who always trust in God. You have to make sure that whenever you're there, whenever you're moving, you put everything in God. You should be courageous. Somebody who emphasizes others, once you get them, when they are weakening, you tell them, yes, God is there. You should move while talking to him. Sing, praise, everything will be okay. That's my message to them. Let them continue entrusting God. God will do each and everything to make sure that they prosper and others overcome their challenges in their families and each and everything they do. Yes, that's my message to them. All right. Yes. All right, thank you so much. And uh, God bless you. Thank Happy you. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day too. All right, thank you. Well, yes, as you can see, the spirits are really high up there. Again, I say the feeling and the atmosphere here is very somber. It's very calm. Uh, Reverend Bossa did tell us that they had a morning session and had prayers and now people are, you know, relaxing and then they're going to have mid-morning prayers again and that is at about 10 a.m. and then again at lunchtime and then again in the evening. So they'll be holding about four services a day until the D-Day and that is uh, 3rd uh, June, I mean 3rd June 2022 which is Matters Day where the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda will be presiding over the prayers right here at the, Angli at the Uganda Matters Anglican site Namugongo. Right on my right, right here, that was a bit of a tongue twister, but you can see the Uganda Matters Museum. And it's actually a tourist site. And uh, entry fees are costing, uh, adults are being charged 10,000 Uganda shillings. Children are being charged uh, 5,000 Uganda shillings. And internationals, those are pilgrims from outside Uganda, from East Africa, Africa, and the world over, will be charged uh, 20,000 Uganda shillings. And you can also book make bookings and, f and make inquiries on when you can come because I can see there's a contact number here. It's quite detailed. And also opening hours are between uh, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Saturday and Sunday that is at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So the community right here up. I'm going to be coming with a cameraman and he'll be showing you. Let's we won't be able to go inside, but I would like to show you what it looks like on the outside. So I know they'll be taking advantage of the 20,000 pilgrims that they expect to have here on 3rd June. Yes, that will be on Friday. It will also not only be an opportunity to come closer to God and pray, but it will also be an opportunity for the church right here at Namugongo to make some money. As you can see, it is beautiful. I just love this. If you can just look at the roof over here, this is supposed to be made of, you know, grass and straw, but this is actually cement, and it actually looks quite real and artistic. I absolutely love this. Can you see that? Can you see that? 
and uh, look at the guards, some of the marchers that have been mounted right here at the entrance. And then the big pots right here at the entrance, absolutely beautiful. You can see some, uh, some of the pilgrims that are standing right here. I'd love to find a gentleman who would love to have a conversation with me. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. Would I please talk to you? My name is Sarah from Sunrise at Sea. Okay. What is your name, sir? My name is Odong Toluka. Odong Toluka. Where are you from? From Otuke. From Otuke. Yes. How did you come here t today for the Mother's Day celebrations? Did you also walk at your foot pilgrim? Yes. You walked all the way? Yes. How many days did it take you to get here? Eight days. Eight days? Yes. What was the journey like? Did you have rest stops for how long did you walk uh, during the day and how many days during the night? The one day you can walk from the the one day you can walk the 30, 60, 65 kilometers okay. for one day. Okay. 55 uh, kilometers yes. in one day? Yes. Right. 65. 65 in one day? Okay, yes. Night, right. night and morning. All right. Yes. Okay. So how are you feeling? Do you have any health complications? Because one would assume if you're making 65 kilometers a day on foot, you would maybe reach here exhausted or maybe your feet are hurting. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very well. Okay. The food is good. <laughs> the, the problem from the road, the have some problem is the water mm -hmm. of the food. Okay. You can buy the food from the road. Yes. You can buy the water from the road. Yes. There are any problems there. Yes. I, I don't know anything from me. Right. It's very good. Right. It's, it's right. It's right. Yes. yes. So I, has, uh, have you been provided with all the necessities and basic needs that you need, like sanitation, uh, you know, washrooms and bathrooms? Are you receiving everything that you need right here? Yes, it's very good. Here is very good. The shelter is good. The side of food is good. Mm -hmm. The side of uh, sleeping is good. Yes. Anything is good. Yes. It's no problem from Namugongo. All right. What message do you have for other faithful believers out there? The message I will give you any things. Any you can the one person you don't come. Mm -hmm. It's no problem from the road. Mm -hmm. It's no problem from coming. Yes. It's good. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. You. Have a great day and happy Mother's Day in advance. Mother's Day is yes. very good. Yes. It's no problem. All right. uh, you are waiting for the big program. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Yes, as you can see, he walked for 65 kilometers a day. I don't think I can even walk for one. From Otuke. <laughs> From Otuke up to Kampala, right here in Namgongo. Imagine that. I don't think that I could make just one kilometer a day. That just goes to show that I need to do more physically with myself, not just for the sake of it, but also for the sake of spirituality, because I do believe they get to meditate and pray and worship during this journey. Over here, I'm sitting with this lady. Very Welcome, this is... Alright. Well, what message do you want to talk about? I want to talk about it. I I to I to Mukuri batatari ho burume burimo twana kwa ishiraha tugikino businje kandi kwine namagara marungi turukusindikira message abantu bitu niko nabo mwako gurisha behe babasekora maga All right all right, there you have it. She says you have to pray and, you know, use your faith that I'm going to have a conversation with the ladies outside here at the entrance of uh, the Uganda Matters Museum. Please come with me. I'd like you to see this. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? What's your name? I'm Lillian. Hello, Lillian. So what has it been like? What has the turn up been like right here at the Uganda Matters uh, Museum? 
Hey, it's not really bad compared to the last past years. Yes, yes that is what we are trying to cope up with. How different has it been? So you're saying that it has not has been as bad as the past two years. I know because of the COVID-19, so it must have reduced the number of tourists coming here to see the museum. So what are you hopeful for this year? Yeah, this year we are hoping for many people because it has been now opened up. In COVID, they limited the number of people coming, but right now it's open to everyone. Yes. Will you be giving out some discounts this year? Yes, the fee has been at 5000 but right now it is 3000 Oh, wow. Yes. All right, that is for the children. The children is 2000 Oh, okay. And uh, what about the international foreigners? Yeah, if uh, actually we are charging them the same amount being the Matters Day, but after Matters Day, the internationals pay 20000 Then the nationals pay 10000 all right, there you have it. The prices have been subsidized this Martyrs Day to encourage more people to come and know more about why they come here every year to celebrate Martyrs Day. As she went on to say that the children will be paying 10,000 shillings, adults will be paying 3,000 shillings, 2,000 shillings, that price will also be going down. You know and taking a look for myself and uh, that is all I had for you right here at the Uganda Matters Anglican site Namugongo in preparation for the Matters Day celebrations on 3rd June this Friday right here in Namugongo. Well that is all I had for you and I'm connecting back to you Shivan in studio. Uh, thank you so much Sarah. I see that you have given us a 360 view of what is actually taking place at the Anglican Matters Shrine but I also noticed that when you when you when you sort of observe what is happening at the Catholic Shrine and at the Uganda Matters Anglican Shrine it's a whole behave of activities at the Catholic Shrine compared to the Anglican Shrine and earlier on when we were doing the Twitter jobs part one with Aggie we actually realized, and this is something that uh, Bishop Mwesije did highlight, and he said back in the days, most times Anglican pilgrims used not to travel to Namugongo. It was always a Catholic thing, and that explains the low turn up in numbers. Well, of course, just to give you an insight, as of yesterday, last week, a fundraising dinner that was held at the Anglican Matters Shrine that was in Kampala Serena Hotel, right Reverend Sheldon Mwesigwa, yes, the Bishop of Ankole Diocese, went ahead and said that they had actually amended the budget for the function from 600 million shillings to 800 million shillings. And of course, this is because of the high cost of living. And about right now, they have a deficit of 300 million Ugandan shillings. Of course, 3rd June is annually celebrated to commemorate the 23 Anglicans and the 22 Catholics that refused to denounce their faith in God. Well, the President of Uganda, that is His Excellency Yori Kaguta Museveni, is expected as the chief guest while the retired Kenyan Anglican Bishop Samson will be the main celebrant. Now, while Sarah was giving us a whole 360 view of actually what is happening when it comes to the Anglican Museum, I noticed that not so many people are putting on masks. I think we are becoming very reluctant and we are becoming oblivious to the fact that COVID-19 is still within us. It is very important that you wear your mask and I would urge those that are going to make their way on Friday, that is the 3rd of June, to either side, either to the Catholic Shrine or to the Anglican Shrine, to please wear your mask and social distance. Of course, let's not also forget the pilgrims that lost their lives. One that lost her life uh, that is uh, Arinait, may her soul rest in Panopis, that lost her life while she was just about to reach the Anglican Matters Museum and the one that was knocked dead on spot. And we do hope that as pilgrims move, as people tour, please take precautions. Be your brother's keeper. And I like, <laughs> it's very interesting, while Sarah was, inter while, while Sarah was interviewing Reverend Bossa and he 
mentioned that over the past years they have been having scientific celebrations and finally God has done it again and they are going to be having physical physical celebrations that is actually something something to thank God for but again the movement of people people walk 65 kilometers people walk 100 kilometers people walk 264 kilometers to come and actually commemorate the martyrs that died because they refused to denounce their faith in God and I just remembered many times we are told you know walk from Intinda to 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 Chihuahua and you're like no I cannot walk but people are walking because of their faith in God I think this is a beautiful initiative and I'm amazed by what actually people are able to do because of their faith in God but again the Anglican shrine is not just any shrine and Sarah did highlight this it's actually a museum as well though we did not have we did not have we're not able to have an insight or to see what the museum looks like but in there are actually grottoes and structures that were put to show exactly from what point the Anglican matters moved and who was burnt next to who together with where each of them stayed and basically when you're moving around in that particular museum there's always a tour guide who tells you what the pains they went through the things they refused to denounce the fact that they were not able to eat food and the different points at which they actually stopped and rested so but of course tomorrow the conversation still continues and I will be giving you an update of what business is like when it comes to Namugongo and I'll, yesterday today actually in the morning when I was coming to work I realized that it's a whole beautiful scenario compared to the other last celebrations and I'm not saying the celebrations in the previous years were not as exciting as this but I think because of the fact that we have been having COVID-19, people are very excited. People have come out in large numbers. There are all sorts of things being sold. There are jerrycans, there are rosaries, there are Bibles. They are, the, the, people are even uh, selling uh, Chiganda medicine. You know, all these things are actually there. However, I did have the opportunity to even, I did have the opportunity to even sit down and talk to some of these people and they say that they just do not wake up and put, you know, and create stores. They actually have to pay. They pay a certain amount of money to be able to showcase some of the things. But also there's a circus, there's a merry-go-round. The other day I saw, I saw donkeys and camels, so people are actually going to be having a good time. And right, I have what I have on my screen right there are actually Red Cross crew. This is a crew which actually takes care of people that are injured or not well. And what we can see right there is a massage happening and different people are receiving treatment. I think this is an absolutely good thing because even as you walk, you know, when people have walked for a long distance, when people have moved for a long distance, and yes, even while they're eating food and water, their muscles tend to contract. Some of their muscles may not even be able to support them. So I think on, on the part of the organizing committee for the Uganda Matter celebrations, it's quite pertinent that they were actually able to to bring the Red Cross on board to be able to take care of the afflicted people. Otherwise, that wraps up what I had for you this morning on the Twitter jabs. But however, the updates in regard to the Uganda Matter celebrations will continue, of course, in our CTV PM edition and, of course, Njuba Engolovi. Otherwise, keep watching Sunrise at Sea. Up next, we take a look at our views.